Hi everyone, this is Guido Pelagos. GS baby. So, what are we doing today? Well, I'm off to work. Still early, it's like 7.15 in the morning, 7.30. So, I have a few minutes left and I thought like, I talked to you about this watch. Is it the biggest mistake, flaw, design idiot who ever made this watch? Probably. Do I still like the watch? Yeah. But there's so much wrong with that watch. Oh, there's the bus. All right, so this morning when I started, I was talking about my watch. Now, why did Citizen make this watch in the first place? I don't know. I actually don't know. Because there's so many flaw things with this watch. It's amazing. First of all, like I said, it's got the 23 millimeter steel bracelet, but it's a it's a water resistant watch to 300 meters water resistance. So if you put this watch on and it doesn't have a mini uh, micro adjuster or diver's extension. So if you want to go diving with this watch, you jump in the water and as soon as you get to 10, 20 meters depth and you feel that the bracelet is a bit tight around your wrist, you have to take out your screwdriver and bring out your extra links and put in an extra link underwater. Very smart. The bezel of the watch sounds like a Invicta Psycho Citizen bezel. It is a Citizen bezel. Well, anyway, it sounds really cheap for what you get. Um, maybe they did it on purpose. I'm not sure how many Citizen watches do this. So maybe it's okay. But for me, the action of the bezel is just very cheap. So we're gonna cross the street here. There we go. So what else is wrong with the watch? Well, the power reserve was kind of meh. It's, uh, you really have to wear it and then it will get the power reserve up to uh, standard. But just giving it a few turns and putting it on is probably not enough. So I had the bracelet come apart because of the links at the last end link, which I had to move heaven and earth because Citizen didn't want to help me. And I finally, I was able to get it anyway via a watchmaker I know. Now I work in the watch industry and I send this off because the crown I couldn't get the crown in properly anymore. It just wasn't really doing anything. So Citizen called me back and said, yeah, your crown is broken. You need the new crown and new crown tube. The funny thing is all these Japanese brands, they don't sell uh, crown tubes. So you have to make them themselves or they repair it for you. So no crown tubes available. And uh, so they put a new crown on. Now, fortunately, it's a little bit cheaper for me, but still, um, so I got it bad, but I asked them to take the crown protector off. You know, the Panerai thing on the top here. And they did it for me. But it actually, it looks nice from the front when it's off. Uh, problem, however, is from the side, there's like a hole in the case. You have to screw in two screws halfway. It's not really that nice. And then the senior watchmaker came to me and he said, why do you have the crown removed? I said, well, it broke. The crown broke because it's one of the hardest things to do on this watch is set the time. Because even though it has this small little lid that opens up for about a millimeter or two, you cannot grab the crown. You don't have anything to hold on to, let alone turn because of the bloody crown protectors in the way. And uh, he, he checked it as well. And I think it's the biggest flaw of this watch is the crown and the crown protector because the crown is ultimately fragile the pin is what, what three millimeters long or something that goes into the watch so you end up with a crown that you have to push in because it's a screw down crown you have to push it in and turn it but since you have nothing to hold on to because the crown protector is in the way there's a big chance you're ruining the crown by putting too much effort or strength or it's horrible. So I said, take the crown protector off. I'll wear it without a crown protector. 
But then the senior watchmaker, he said, well, it's nice that you're a watch collector, Guido, but uh, listen to a, watch a watchmaker, that crown has to be on the watch. I said, why? He said, well, if you hit it now, your crown is going to be damaged immediately. And probably that's the reason why I put the crown protector on in the first place. Because they knew they made a design flaw with making a very short turn to set the crown. It's like half a turn and it's tight. You can't put it any tighter because you'll break the crown. So it's like half a turn. It's like, and that's when your crown is. So it's open very quickly as well. So that's not really handy. Hey, Lubbush. <laughs> All right. So that's what I need the crown protector for. It's, it's not like a nice thing. No, it's actually necessary because it's a big design flaw in my opinion. So this is the biggest design flawed citizen. But in my opinion, it's also one of the most nice, beautiful citizens ever made. So it's a love-hate relationship with this watch. But uh, yeah, that stuff happens, right? So what do you think? What do you think about this watch? It's a nice watch, isn't it? Looks like it's a bit big. Well, you know, who cares? It's a Grand Touring watch. All right, guys. Keep posted to the channel. New stuff coming up. And uh, so I'll, I, I'm putting a video in here, probably before or after this, that you can see how the watch actually looks without the crown protector. Looks a lot more symmetrical. I liked it. But uh, I'm not going to go against the advice of a senior watchmaker. I'd be mad to do that. So have a look at how it looked. And... Uh, See you soon for a new uh, video. Cheers, guys. Jody, bye.